Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. No, wait a minute. Wrong YouTube channel. That's other stuff I watch. Welcome back to Frazzled Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzled Dad. And today I'm going to show you how I made this awesome Warhammer proxy jet bike thing from this fantastic model that I got through uh, one of a regular Patreon and MMF tribes. Yet another awesome uh, model hit my table uh, from the awesome partnerships that Once in a Six Side strikes up. And this time it was with Moid, who is a great sculptor and has a lot of really interesting stuff. Moid's um, sculpts are just top-notch and a crazy amount of detail and options. So it's really, really flexible. Uh, and... If there's any problem through his own Discord server, he is just Johnny on the spot with getting things fixed up. So I saw this and immediately had some interesting ideas that I wanted to do, mostly some effects around the little kind of bobbin-like uh, coils for the repulsor drive or whatever the heck they are. Uh, and... It was kind of funny as I was going through and building the model and building the goofy little character pilot, um, got a little backstory in my head about uh, who he was and what he did. And it was just kind of an entertaining experience. But enough of that. Let's get over to the desk and start working on this great model. Here I'm just starting to block out various bits and pieces of color. I uh, wanted to hit some yellow on the top. Every time you use yellow, it's going to be a lot of coats. There are a bunch of different tricks to getting yellow to go down well. Um, but this was just starting to block some things out. I also was very interested in putting some kind of like a racing stripe on. So I'm masking up the back of the jet bike. And I'm going to be getting after it with a bit of uh, AK wine red. It's a nice, lovely looking red. And it, it's also a darker red, not a bright one. I thought that would look pretty cool. I also decided to play around with a little freehand arrow. This is uh, one of the Vallejo blues and uh, as always with freehand a good amount of flow improver mixed in. Now it's just working on some odds and ends details. I'm using some Vallejo silver one of the nine million to do the engine. I got the engine cone with some of that wine red because it looked cool and it was on the palette so why not reuse it. I'm also working on painting the guns, and I'm using AK's, uh, or Viejo's, uh, black metal, which is kind of a nice metallic black. Um, I use that as a base for a lot of weapons barrels. So, yep, just working on picking those out and catching a few other details. And here I am starting to paint the dials, the gauges, and uh, I decided this pilot seemed like he was somebody who flew everything past the red line all the time. So I'm painting every single button and dial and gauge and thingamabob bright red because, yeah, why not? Now it's time to get to work on the pilot, and uh, I'm not getting overly detailed you know, just throw some interesting colors on. I'm using uh, black red for the overcoat. Um, I think I just mixed in a bit of ivory or something else when I'm looking for lighter colors. I'll also catch some highlights, uh, but I am not putting a lot of effort into the pilot. Just, you know, presentable. Now I'm using some of Pro Acryl's bronze to just pick out some small details. There's some engine lash latches. Um, there's bullets in the gun magazine, the drum. 
uh, and uh, a couple of other small things, but just trying to get a color that's a little different to give a little bit of visual pop. Now it's time for some edge highlighting. I just mixed up gray based on whatever I had on the palette. Might have grabbed some uh, already mixed gray and then added some white in. But, you know, edge highlighting. There's lots of interesting little panel lines here. Uh, lots of places to add some lighter pop. So just getting after it and hitting some spots with some brighter colors to make them stand out. <music> Now I'm using a bit of Vallejo's Model Wash, their dark brown product. I've got this really, really watered down. I bet it's at least two or three to one. The product is really thick, and it's actually too thick for me. But when I water it down this much, thin it down, I really like it as a wash to just help get things a little grimy. So I'm slathered and on, slathering it on pretty well. I'm working hard to move around any places where it pulls up on flat surfaces and shove that off into gullies and cracks and panel lines and whatnot. I really like the effect. It just helps us. It helps give this jet bike a really worn, dirty look, which is exactly what I wanted. Great stuff, just water it down. Now it's time for some dirty down rust. The standard disclaimer, you cannot just shake this. You have to get a spatula or some tool in there and scrape the bottom and then shake the snot out of it. Sorry about my fat head in the way. Uh, You'll notice I've got a little piece of uh, paper or cardboard jammed in. I probably should have painted these as sub-assemblies, um, but yeah, oh well. I'm getting around it. Just be careful with this stuff. You can reactivate it and clean it up a bit with water, but better to not make a mess in the first place. But man, Dirty, Dirty Down is just awesome. All three of their products I love, um, but this Rust in particular... Uh, yeah, it's the jam. Great stuff. Now I'm using some of AK's Streaking Grime. This is an enamel-based product, so, you know, just make sure you're aware of limitations around that when you can put it on, what you have to do afterwards. But I really like this. What I'm trying to do here is get the effect of grunge that would have come from, you know, gun smoke. Um, firing off projectile weapons means you've got gunpowder or something similar and stuff gets pretty dirty. I'm trying to show some leakage from the exhaust ports. This looks very thick to start with, but I'll come back with a brush that's somewhat clean and then dunked in white spirits and really clean some things up. And you don't need much of this. You might have caught there. I actually just dipped in the lid, not down into the actual pot. Uh, shake the snot out of this and then I'll just generally dab my brush in the pot and that gets me enough um, to kind of take care of what I needed. Uh, this is also me cleaning up a couple spots where I'd missed with the dirty down rust. Uh, this has a similar effect and it's okay for kind of touching up oopsie spots that you may have missed. But anyway, put the stuff down, let it dry a little bit, then come back with a brush that is lightly damp with mineral spirits and uh, get after moving stuff around like you'd like. Now I'm 
smearing, apologies for the cat hair, uh, now I'm smearing AK texture paste on a 70 by 105 uh, oval base and just working through the process here. Um, I'll get that all smoothed out and then I will move to adding some uh, stones and stuff and I was a dork and completely screwed up the focus. Oops. I'm also adding in some static grass and then here's a view once I figured out that I had the focus screwed up. So let that dry and move on. Now I'm trying to brighten up some of the glowy effects from the blue plasma coil, repulsor thingy mobs, whatever they are. I've got some AK flat white that I have thinned down with a lot of flow improver. I'm trying to wick it into the spaces between the coils. I'll come back and I'll hit the actual coils themselves with some more of the golden flow blue fluorescent. But here I'm just trying to brighten things up. You might also notice that there's some blue uh, glow effect OSL whatever on parts of the body. I took this out into the garage and did some careful spraying to get some of that glow onto the body panels themselves. Right now I've jumped ahead quite a bit. Um, I screwed up the recording for the dust cloud effects. I'll talk about that later. Right now I'm taking some super glue. I had to stab the tube open because the top was wouldn't come off. I've got some strands of electric wire that I took out of a old unused thick power cord. And I've cut those into small pieces and I'm trying to glue that in between the ridges of the plasma repulsor coil things. Um, this is very fussy. There's a lot of profanity involved. Just take your time. Uh, but it worked out really well and used gel super glue. I found that worked better than the thin. The gel gives it something to hold in with. So I'm just adding a bunch of those and then I'll come back and paint them for effect later. Now I'm working on painting those little pieces of electric cable. So I'm using a bright white. Again, I think I went back to that AK flat white. I'm also using some Pro Acryl sky blue that I'll mix in. And this is really just going in and touching things up. It's not all that hard. Uh, just be careful. Um, I'll also note it would be useful to make sure that the super glue is dry so that you don't get your brush tip in the wet super glue. Not that I would have done that. There you have it. Um, I don't play Warhammer, but I've always liked watching um, playbacks uh, from like play on tabletop or you know other folks when they were running their little jet bike like units around uh, they just seemed a lot of fun so I was really happy to have an opportunity to give my hand at painting one and Moyd the sculptor uh, he's the bomb his stuff is really great and if you're into 3d printing by all means you gotta go check his stuff out um, Oh, one thing about the dust clouds, that part that I forgot, uh, you just take cotton balls, stretch them out gently, spray them with some hairspray. Don't spritz them with white glue, that doesn't work. Hairspray is the trick. Uh, you can um, tear them up a little bit more after that, manipulate them. Uh, spray them with an airbrush. I don't think you can really realistically do it with any type of a, a paintbrush, you need an airbrush. And you need to put a surprising amount of paint on there. Uh, you want to get some good contrast. You want to get some good variation. But that texture on those cotton balls really takes well to make like smoke and dust in this case. You can see that I got a little of the OSL on there in addition to the dirt. Uh, but yeah, 
This was a whole lot of fun. So here is the completed work. Meet Bob. Bob drives a Griffin Explorer jet bike. You'll notice that all the dials on Bob's bike dash are in the red. That's how Bob rolls, because Earl taught Bob how to drive, and nobody argues with Earl, and that's how Earl did it. Bob loves his bike, even if he doesn't really know how to do basic maintenance. It's kind of the same relationship he has with his dental hygienist. Bob doesn't take crap from anybody, especially about his fuchsia helmet. Ask Dave, the last person who made unkind comments. Well, you could ask Dave, except nobody can find Dave. But the compost pile behind the base sure has smelled funny for a bit now. There you have it. All done. Again, this was great fun. If you liked the video, kindly do all the things. Click the subscribe button so you can catch new episodes when they drop. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments uh, what it was that you enjoyed about this. Um, do you have jet bikes for your own Warhammer stuff? Let me know. Until next time, remember... Be kind, experiment, learn some stuff, fool around. At the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic. Bye now.